our next job and we're back onto the drive shafts and it turns out I've engineered myself into a bit of a hole. When I got the engine, this is the engine mount that came with it, so I used it. Uh, it's an engine mount, it's the bearing housing for this bearing, for this part of the drive shaft and it also houses the oil filter and the oil uh, thermostat, so a fairly complicated little casting with a few things going on. When I got the engine, I didn't have this drive shaft, didn't think too much about it. Then I got the six speed box and that drive shaft came with it. I went to install it and soon realized that the bearing uh, sits quite a way out from where the housing is. No worries, I thought I'll just find the correct engine mount and bearing housing to suit that drive shaft. I've got one here. Do you notice anything different? Yeah, it doesn't have an engine mount. Turns out that the later model V6s with the six speed box never used an engine mount in that location. They just had a secondary gearbox mount over here. No worries, I thought I'll just machine up an extension bush uh, to extend out from the bearing carrier to this bearing. Turns out this particular engine mount is off an auto and the auto diff sat in a different location to the manual diff. So this hole isn't in the right spot for this bearing. It's not concentric. No worries, I'll get the manual version of this engine mount. Yeah, they never brought the manual out in Australia. So we've got a bit of a problem. So what are options? Well, we've got a few. We could try and use something like this, which is a engine mount of an even earlier V6. It's got the bearing housing in the correct location radially, I think, uh, but it's still too far back for that drive shaft. Uh, it's also missing all the oil filter and oil thermostat arrangement. Maybe There may be a way to jerry-rig something up um, it's also steel and not alley and weighs a metric ton. So yeah, I don't think we'll go down that route. Next option was to use this casting. Um, it's got the bearing housing in exactly the right spot, uh, but no engine mount. I was, I was thinking maybe we could make up like a steel fabricated exoskeleton that took off, picked up off those three points, picked up off the, the bearing bolts, and then continue down to the engine mount. Definitely doable, uh, but a lot of work. I thought about welding a foot to this casting and beefing it up a little bit. Um, doable, but with all these ceiling faces um, and also welding an aluminum casting for a pretty high stress component of the car, wasn't super happy with doing that. So uh, I I sort of decided against this option. So the final option I came up with and the uh, one I'm gonna go for is to machine up an eccentric bearing housing that shifts the bearing out and across to where it's supposed to be. So whilst all of life's problems can be solved with a angle grinder and a welder, I think it's over to the lathe for this one. This could get very dangerous. So I've got the first casting set up. Um, I'm using this machined surface that goes up against the block as one reference face. The whole casting is located on the block with two dowel pins. So I've got a, uh, a good fitting rod into one of those dowel pin holes and that's resting up against the one, two, three block. And then using my digital level squared up this bearing face so it's 90 degrees 90 degrees to the surface plate i'd prefer to use a nice big right angle reference square but i haven't got one so that will have to do i think it'll be good enough so now what we need to do is measure the height from the surface plate 
to this bearing location. Uh, it's an inside curve, so I've just got this mini bearing, which clearly isn't the right bearing, just so I can uh, measure the top of that rather than trying to find the bottom of the curve. Okay, we'll zero that because the overall distance is meaningless. All we're after is a difference. Oh, maybe that one. Okay, now we will set up the other casting in exactly the same way and compare the results. Set up the other casting in exactly the same way. I've already checked it with the height gauge and we are 0.5 of a millimeter difference. So we were, oh, I need to know the direction too, don't I? So 0.5 of a millimeter uh, that way. Second measurement. So I've got the first casting set up 90 degrees to the original way we had it. I did think this was going to be a very easy setup, but I quickly checked and it turns out that the machined face on the bottom of this casting is not perfectly perpendicular to this face. Uh, it was out by 0.3 of a degree. So I've raised it up with some shim stock uh, and now we will take our second measurement. Okay, it looks pretty happy there. Next casting. Six point six eight millimeters. Give me a second to uh, do a quick drawing and we'll head over to the lathe. Okay, got our drawing and our bit of stock, part of that bit off already, that was good fun. And cleaned up this section that will become our spacer fitting. I've just scribed a, a center line across there and you can see the center points of our two off center sections of this little fitting. Uh, I could have put, I guess I could have started in the center for one of them and just had the other one right off the side but I wanted to try and keep it centered in the stock as much as possible. Is that enough centering for everyone? Anyway, over to the lathe. So I'm gonna start with the front. That's the, uh, the end that the bearing seats into because it's got more features I need to machine. I'm just gonna use that center punch mark to line up the center of the block in the fore jaw. This isn't critical because it's the distance from that center to the other center that we're really worried about. This is just to sort of center it in the block. So using that center punch mark for this setup is fine. So so I'll just check that rough setup with the dial indicator. So we're on zero there. And we'll wind it around. So that's one mil, two, three, four, five, six. Six point. Five, seven. And we were going for six point seven. Not bad for a uh, set up with the center punch. Uh, I guess I should get it right. Six point six eight. I think that's close enough. First off, we need a 40 millimeter hole, and this is just clearance for the shaft. So start off with this eight mil drill bit, move up to this random drill bit, but that's the biggest one I have, and then we'll finish it all up 
with this boring bar. Okay, let's ruin this nice block of aluminium. Turns out that big drill is not big enough for my big boring bar. So I'll have to take a little bit more out with this little boring bar. It's uh, probably a little bit more stick out than I would normally like, but it's aluminium and it's not a finishing pass. So I'm sure it'll be fine. Now we should be able to get the big boy in there, uh, which is good because we're at 26 millimeters at the moment and we need to get it out to 40. So a fair bit of material to remove. Next, we need to make a recess for the bearing retaining ring and it wants to go in 31.8 mil. Okay, we'll set our Lay stop to 31, gives us 8 mil to clean up after I drop that. Well, it's a little bit close. Let me swing it over that way. And we need to take that out to 50 mil. Uh, again, this is just a clearance for that ring, so the dimension isn't super critical. Last feature on this side is the bearing cavity. Uh, it's got to be in 19.8 mil, so I've set the lathe bed stop to 19 mil. Uh, and much like the other features, um, it's just a bearing fit, so the dimension isn't that critical. Oh wait, no, the other thing, it's really critical. And unfortunately, uh, I am missing the internal micrometer for that size range, so I am forced to use the most annoying measurement tool ever created, the telescopic gauge. I'm aiming for pretty much a a fit, not a press fit. Um, measuring the original casting, uh, the bearing mount is maybe 0 0.01 millimeters smaller than the bearing, so pretty much size to size. Uh, let's see how we go. First, we need to rough out the size. So, best off I can measure, uh, we are at 61.18 so I'm going to divide that by two take 2.4 mil cuts and we should be bang on our size I've also uh, slowed the feed rate of the uh, the lathe down a little bit now to get a better surface finish halfway there time to pull it out of the chuck and rotate it around. I also chamfered those uh, edges just to clean it up a little bit and also help uh, the bearing get into its hole. So now we need to work out how to hold it in the other direction and get this off center center action going. So our mission now is to offset this block 6.7 mils millimeters from the features we just machined. So I've spun it around. The only feature I have access to now is that through hole, which ended up being 45 millimeters. That's too small to get the dial indicator in there. So I'm using this little test indicator to center the block on that through hole. Then I'll make a couple of cuts on this outer surface and use that to take the reading with the dial indicator so we can shift the whole block 6.7 millimeters across. That's not bad at all. So we've come to the interesting bit. 
well, I guess that depends if you like this sort of stuff or not. But it's time to set this critical offset. Got the dial indicator set up at zero. Uh, I've got the block set up with the direction I sort of want the block to shift across on these two jaws. And then this expertly drawn circle is where we want our new 62mm boss. So I'm going to adjust these two jaws and try and get a reading on the dial indicator of 6.7 millimetres. No, we want... Hold on. Sorry, just had to have a quick team meeting then. Yes, we want 6.7 millimetres, but not from side to side. Only in one direction. Uh, if I wanted to do a full side to side measurement, I'd need... Um, 13.4 millimetres of travel on my dial indicator, which I don't have. So I'm just going to shift it across and just keep checking for the high point. And I want an offset of 6.7 millimetres. Okay, I think... I think we're alright. We want... Oh, <laughs> oh, this is such a head fuck. We want 6.7 millimetres in that direction to get this boss back into the center. Right, let's do it. So we wanna loosen this one. So that's one, two, six point, Five, six point six, six point six seven, a little bit too far there. Six point seven. All right, let's machine our boss. Can't do any more than that. Time to pull it out of the chuck and see if it fits. So I've just aligned our new spacer block, or the orientation of it, by eye. Let's see how close we are. Slide that end into the uh, diff, and... Oh, oh! Oh, too good. That is spot on. That definitely deserves a beer. Enough celebration, time to get on to mounting this thing. Now originally I planned to get all fancy and plug this hole uh, and then re-drill it the six or so millimetres across and then uh, run through bolts the whole way through and then remake the bearing captive plate that bolts up onto the other side. Looking at the unit now, I think a neater solution will be to drill and tap into the back of this to locate to drill and tap into this block in these original locations to fix this unit in to the housing and then drill and tap uh, some studs so that we can just do that, that bearing, that captive plate up with some nuts on this side and I'll rotate them around so that the two bolts don't interfere with each other. That'll all work really well. Uh, small issue is I've only got about 12 mil of material for this bolt to thread into. Uh, 12 mil is a fair bit, but it is aluminium. So just to help me sleep at night, I think I might helicoil that one. Uh, first thing to do though, is get our final rotation alignment sorted, and then I'll spot these holes and then we can drill and tap the back. 
I've managed to mount the whole unit in the mill uh, in a way that I can uh, remove just the casting. So I'm just spotting each hole with this, um, with this little angled pin to get the center of each hole and then writing down the location from the DRO. That one's minus 56.67. And minus 19.35. I've already done the other two. I zeroed on that one. Got 9.01 and 59.01. So now I can remove the casting and uh, put the tapping drill in and uh, tap some holes. Or we'll drill some holes first, then tap them. They have gone in there very nicely. Uh, turns out I had more than enough material for all of the uh, tapped holes, so didn't need to stuff around with a helicoil. So that was a bit of a win. So the next item to attend to is the uh, location of this little uh, bearing retaining plate. So we're gonna knock those uh, knock those captive nuts off. I'll run some studs into our new block and then we'll just do up, uh, do the nuts up from this side. So we just want to sort out the rotation where we want this plate. Uh, want to be able to get to the, uh, the nuts from uh, when it's in the vehicle and uh, need to miss our other three threaded holes. So, and I'm thinking Somewhere around there is going to fit the bill. I've turned up this little boss, which will locate on this hole here, and I've centered the uh, DRO on the center of this boss. I've actually done it twice because I forgot to press the zero button, which is pretty annoying. So the idea is we'll drop that onto this boss, which is quite a nice fit. Now we can rotate it and get it aligned to where we want. I've chosen this uh, uh, hole as my zero. Uh, using the measurements we took when I drilled and tapped the other holes, I've worked out a few X, Y, Z coordinates and we're going for zero and 38.86, which is there. And so we'll line that up with our mark about there, clamp it down and uh, start drilling and tapping some holes. And there she is in all her glory. Thanks for watching.